Hi, you can call me Josh. This happened back in 2018. I guess I was looking for ways to clear my head. Hiking had always been kind of therapeutic for me, you know? Something about the rhythm of walking, being alone out there with nothing but trees and rocks, it helped me sort through stuff. I'd gone on this solo hike in a state park a couple of hours outside of town. I'd hiked there before, but never alone. It was one of those impulsive things. Just threw on some old hiking boots, grabbed a half-full water bottle, and told myself I'd keep it short and easy. I even left my phone on silent, because I didn't want anyone or anything from the real world creeping into my day. The trail I picked was quiet, mostly shaded by tall pines and oaks with stretches of open, grassy areas. It was around noon, so the sun was strong, but the woods still had this kind of damp, earthy smell that made everything feel cooler, calmer. Every now and then I'd stop to take in the silence, the distant rustle of leaves from some animal moving around. No other hikers, no sounds of people, just me. That was exactly what I needed, peace and quiet, some time to just let my mind wander. About an hour in, I was sitting on this old half-rotted log, just taking a break, when I heard someone coming up the path behind me. I didn't think much of it, figured it was another hiker. The guy who came up was maybe late 30s, early 40s. Kinda hard to tell because he had a rough look to him, scruffy beard, heavy boots, some old cargo pants with stains that looked like they'd been there forever. He smiled when he saw me, this kind of wide, easy grin that felt just a little off. He came over and said he'd gotten lost, asked if I knew which way led back to the parking lot. I shrugged and told him I was pretty sure the way he came from was leading out. He laughed and said, well, I guess I'm not too good with directions. He seemed friendly enough, so when he asked if he could join me for a bit, I didn't really feel like saying no. Maybe part of me thought it'd be safer not to be alone out there, even if it was just some stranger. We started walking together, and at first it was mostly small talk. He mentioned he'd been hiking these woods for years, but he'd never really paid attention to where he was going, as he put it. I remember thinking it was weird for someone to hike the same trails a lot and still manage to get lost, but I didn't say anything. He had this habit of walking close, not in a way that seemed intentional, but it still made me a little uncomfortable. After a while, he started talking about these hidden paths in the forest, trails that weren't on the map, ones he'd found on his own. He leaned in a bit and said, the best ones are the ones you have to discover yourself. They don't lead anywhere folks know about. I kind of laughed it off, figuring he was just trying to sound mysterious or something. But he went on about how some people come out to these woods for special events. It wasn't a campfire ghost story vibe, though. More like he was talking about something very real. Almost like he was inviting me into some secret club. Then he asked if I'd be interested in coming back around 2 or 3 in the morning. Said there was a gathering for pure people, and that if I wanted in, he could show me the way. I was trying not to react too much, but I remember laughing a bit, just to play it off. Pure people? What's that supposed to mean? He just smiled at me, this strange, knowing look, and said, It's about life, man. The real stuff. Not the fake things people think matter. You'd get it if you came. We walked in silence for a few minutes after that. I was getting more and more uneasy but he was acting like nothing weird was happening. Then, out of nowhere, he stopped, pulled his shirt up in the back, and showed me this symbol burned into his skin. It was a pentagram, clear as day, like it had been seared right into his back. I tried not to react too much, but I could feel my face give me away. He looked over his shoulder at me and said, You could get one too if you're interested. We look out for each other. You'd get benefits. I don't know why, but I was kind of frozen for a second, not knowing what to say or do. It was like my brain was trying to process if he was serious, and all the warning bells were going off in my head. I managed to mutter something like, Nah, man, I'm good, and tried to keep walking, like I was just going to shake it off and move on. But he stepped in front of me, blocking the trail. He gave me this serious look, his face completely blank. He leaned in and said, This isn't a joke, all right? It's not something you just brush off. Then he reached into his backpack, pulled out a small handgun, and just held it down by his side. Didn't raise it, didn't point it at me, 
but he looked me dead in the eye and said, bye. I don't know if it was the shock or what, but my feet felt like lead for a second. Then something clicked, and I just nodded and said, yeah, yeah, sure, and started backing away. I kept my eyes on him as I moved, not turning my back until there was a good distance between us. The whole time, he just stood there, watching me, that weird grin creeping back onto his face as I got further and further away. The second I felt safe enough, I turned and walked fast, trying to remember every twist and turn of the trail to get back to the parking lot. I didn't look back, didn't even try to be quiet, just made a beeline for my car, feeling like he could be right behind me the whole time. When I finally reached my car, I jumped in, locked the doors and sat there for a minute, catching my breath. I remember feeling this overwhelming sense of relief mixed with this weird, sick feeling in my stomach. I've thought about that day so many times since. There was something, I don't know, something too real about it. I never went back to that trail. Even talking about it now, I get chills just thinking about that look on his face, that damn grin. I was in my early 30s, living alone on the edge of a quiet little town, not far from where I'd grown up. Work was steady, if a little boring, and though I wasn't exactly where I'd hoped to be in life, I had a routine that kept things feeling manageable. I had a pretty simple life, maybe too simple, now that I think about it, but I liked it that way. After a messy divorce and a few dead-end relationships, I wasn't really looking for anyone new. I spent my weekends mostly at home, tinkering around the house. If I wasn't working on something inside, you'd find me in the yard, keeping everything in decent shape. That old fence along the back was one of those projects I'd been putting off forever. It had taken a few years of bad winters, and some of the posts were starting to lean, making the whole thing look kind of ragged. The neighbor's yard behind mine was overgrown with ivy and old trees, so I just put off dealing with the whole thing. But that year, it got so bad I couldn't ignore it anymore. So one Saturday morning, I finally got myself together and went out there with a toolbox. It was bright, a little chilly, the kind of early spring day where you're cold when the wind hits, but the sun's warm enough to make you feel all right. The road behind my yard was usually quiet, just the odd car here and there, maybe someone walking their dog. I was just setting down my tools when I heard someone clear their throat. I turned around, and there was this man standing by the fence, hands stuffed into his pockets. He was maybe in his mid-forties, dressed in an old bomber jacket with a faded cap pulled low over his face. He was the kind of person you'd see once and forget. Nothing about him stood out much. But he was watching me in this way that felt a little off, like he'd been waiting for me to look at him. Need a hand with that? He asked, nodding toward my fence. Oh no, I'm all right. I said, just a few loose boards. He smiled, but it didn't quite reach his eyes. I know how those things go. You get started, think it'll be a quick job, and before you know it, you're out here all day. I forced a laugh just to be polite. Yep, that's usually how it goes. He stayed there, leaning against the fence, looking at me. I figured he was just being neighborly, maybe trying to make small talk. We all knew each other in that area, at least by sight, but I didn't recognize him. He was probably new, or maybe renting one of those old bungalows up the road. Did you just move in? I asked, trying to keep things light. Oh yeah, been here a few weeks, he replied, but his answer was vague. He didn't mention which house or anything, just kept staring. So, you live alone out here? The question caught me off guard. I nodded slowly, wondering why he'd want to know something like that. It wasn't a big town, but people didn't usually ask direct stuff like that unless they had a reason. Must get kind of quiet at night, he said, his voice casual, but there was something in the way he said it that felt too familiar, like he knew more about me than he was letting on. I shrugged, trying to keep things friendly but distant. Yeah, it's peaceful enough, mostly just me out here. He didn't respond to that, just kept standing there, looking around my yard like he was sizing it up. Then, out of nowhere, he started asking about my family, whether they lived nearby, if I had any kids, if I was ever gone for long stretches. It was all so personal, too much for someone I'd just met. Look, I finally said, I appreciate the offer, but I've got this handled. I tried to keep my tone friendly but firm, hoping he'd get the hint. But he didn't. 
If anything, he seemed more interested, as if my reluctance just made him curious. He stayed quiet for a moment, eyes drifting over the fence, the yard, and then he let out this low chuckle. Good luck with that fence, he said, finally turning to go. You never know who might wander by. And with that, he walked off, disappearing down the road without another word. After he left, I tried to shake it off. I went back to my repairs, trying to keep my mind busy, but the whole encounter left me on edge. By the time I was done with the fence, the sun was starting to set. A few days later, I was at the grocery store when I overheard a conversation between two women in the checkout line. They were talking about a recent string of break-ins in the area, houses with backyards facing the road, women living alone. According to them, whoever it was had been breaking in, leaving notes. Disturbing notes, written in strange, almost poetic language, like they were love letters. Filled with details about the women's routines, their habits, things no one should have known. Apparently the police were investigating, but they didn't have much to go on. I remember my stomach sinking, that man's voice echoing in my head. You never know who might wander by. One evening, I got home late from work. It was already dark, and as I walked up to my front door, I noticed something sticking out from the edge of the fence. I went over and found a small folded up piece of paper, wedged between two of the boards. My heart pounded as I reached out and took it, fingers trembling. When I unfolded it, I felt sick. It was a note, written in this tiny, cramped handwriting. It said something like, I've seen you. I've watched you alone in your quiet little life. I know where you sleep. Weeks went by, and there were no more notes, no more weird encounters. The police had made some arrests, and the break-in seemed to stop, though they never caught the guy who left the notes. Maybe it was just some weirdo passing through town, messing with people. I'm Sasha, and this was a few years back, and I was in a bit of a rough patch. I was fresh out of a breakup, and honestly, I was a bit of a mess. My friend Mara knew that, and I think she felt kind of sorry for me. She was going on this long work trip, some conference thing, and her place was a bit out in the sticks, way more secluded than mine. She offered for me to stay there, partly to help her out with the house, but also, I think, to give me some space away from everything, really. She had this cozy place, quiet, lots of trees, and just the kind of spot where I thought I could get my head back on straight. I packed up and drove out there with a few bags. Mara left me this long list of things to keep an eye on, but mostly it was easy stuff. Check her mail, water a few plants, feed her fish. I figured it would be a few peaceful days where I could just unwind and maybe catch up on some reading. Or at least that's what I thought, right? The first couple of nights were fine. The place was dead quiet, but that didn't bother me. Actually, it was kind of nice. I'd walk around the house in my pajamas, not a care in the world. Her living room had this big couch, super comfy, where I'd curl up with tea, put on a movie, maybe have a snack. I got used to the little sounds of the place pretty quick, the hum of the fridge, a bit of creaking from the wood floors, the occasional rustle from outside. But on the third night, I started hearing something else. I thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. You know how when it's quiet, you can start hearing your own thoughts a bit too loud? I'd be halfway through a movie, and there'd be this faint noise, almost like a thud coming from the kitchen. I'd pause and sit there, waiting, straining my ears. But every time it would go quiet again. I figured it was probably something with the pipes, or maybe an animal outside, like a raccoon or something. Then the noises got more specific. It was around 1 a.m. when I heard what sounded like footsteps shuffling, almost cautious. They were soft but distinct coming from the kitchen area. I actually sat up, heart pounding, because it didn't feel like the kind of sound you'd brush off. I ended up grabbing one of those long metal flashlights Mara kept near the back door, just in case, you know. I crept down the hall, trying to keep my breathing quiet. Even though my heartbeat was so loud, it felt like it'd give me away. I didn't see anything. But when I got to the kitchen, I noticed something odd on the floor, like wet footprints. They weren't super clear, more like smudges, almost like someone had walked through a puddle outside and then wandered through her kitchen. But it hadn't rained in days. I stood there, staring at them, wondering if maybe I was just imagining things. I even rubbed my eyes, 
trying to clear the fuzziness out of my head. But those marks were still there, faint but there. I felt a chill but told myself it was nothing. Just some weird stain or maybe water I spilled and forgot about. Anyway, I tried to put it out of my mind, even though I couldn't shake the unease. The next day, I checked around the house, looked out the back door, and then the surrounding trees. The whole place just seemed still and untouched. Nothing out there to explain those marks. I almost convinced myself it had been my imagination. But then the next night, well, it got worse. It was around the same time, late, and I was just lounging on the couch, watching some old horror movie. Yeah, probably not the smartest choice in hindsight. Out of nowhere, my phone buzzed. I jolted a little. My friend Mara was calling me. As I went to answer, I glanced at the window next to the couch. There was a man there, just standing, staring at me. He was wearing this blank white mask, the kind you might see in a cheap costume store, and I swear for a second, I couldn't even move. It was like my body froze, every hair standing up. His face was almost pressed against the glass, like he was trying to get a good look at me. My brain couldn't even process it. One second, I was just sitting there, and the next, I was staring straight at this stranger's empty, expressionless face. I don't even remember answering the phone. I think I just sat there, holding it up to my ear, because Mara's voice snapped me out of it. I scrambled back, nearly dropping my phone, and when I looked again, he was gone. I don't know how to explain it. He didn't walk away. He didn't make any noise. It was like he'd just vanished. I told Mara I'd call her back, and I immediately went to check the doors, making sure everything was locked. I even pulled a few blinds down, half expecting to see him peering in from somewhere else. When I finally calmed down a little, I remembered that Mara had a set of security cameras around the place. I hadn't paid much attention to them since I got there, honestly didn't even know how to use them, but I felt desperate, like I needed to know if he was still lurking around. I found the monitor in her bedroom closet and played back the feed. There was no sound, but I could see myself sitting on the couch, watching the TV, totally unaware. And then he stepped into view, almost as if he'd come from the shadows themselves. He moved slowly, cautiously, until he was right by the window, inches from the glass, watching me. It was so creepy to watch, I could see myself just sitting there, completely oblivious to him. Then my phone rang, and just like that, he backed away and disappeared into the night. I felt like I dreamed the whole thing. But I wasn't out of my mind. There were more footprints, leading from the back edge of the forest to the kitchen door. I stared at them, my stomach twisting, because they weren't just footprints. They were impressions, like he'd stood there pausing, as if deciding what to do next. I left that day, packed my things, and bolted.